Are you sick and tired of dealing with FPS stutters and input lag in Fortnite? Do you wish you had high FPS and zero input lag like the pros that you watch? If you answered yes to either of those questions, then this video is for you. In this Fortnite settings video, I will show you 10 easy and simple ways to optimize your Windows and Nvidia slash AMD settings to get the most performance out of your hardware. Make sure to watch until the end of the video for a special tip that I bet you haven't heard about. Also, use code need for beans. All right, guys, so the number one most important thing that's really going to help you with your FPS is disabling any other programs that have an overlay and that clog up your render queue. So the most common programs that have an overlay are going to be Discord, NVIDIA Shadowplay, and Xbox Game Bar. To disable Xbox Game Bar, type in Game Bar in your search, in your Windows search, and make sure Xbox Game Bar is set to off. All right? The next thing for Discord, to disable the overlay, go to the overlay settings right here and turn it off. Okay? And for NVIDIA Shadowplay, I personally don't use it. But those that use NVIDIA Shadowplay, I highly recommend you guys just switch to Streamlabs OBS. Because uh, NVIDIA Shadowplay actually, with that overlay, ends up hurting your FPS. The next thing you want to do is disable hardware acceleration on Chrome and Discord. A lot of people don't do it. And that's actually going to help your FPS a whole lot because it's going to open up resources for your CPU. To disable hardware acceleration in Discord, go to Settings. Appearance, scroll down here and make sure hardware acceleration is off. For Chrome, it's the same thing. Just go to settings right here, scroll down, advanced, and make sure that hardware acceleration is off. All right, that is going to be help you guys the most. And last but not least, if you're using OBS like me, right click and set it to performance mode. That's going to really, really help you with your FPS. That's the biggest thing that really helps me. Um, with my input lag especially, because my computer doesn't have to render everything twice, essentially, right? So putting in right-click performance mode makes a whole lot of difference. The second most important thing is to make sure your CPU is running permanently in Turbo Boost. A lot of Intel and Ryzen chips will have a base clock speed, and then they will have a Turbo speed. You want to make sure that your CPU is always running at its highest possible frequency. That's not going to damage your CPU or any components at all. It's just going to make sure there's always power available when it's required. So as you can see, in order to check what uh, frequency your CPU is running at, hit Control shift escape It'll bring up the task manager. Go to Performance, go to CPU, and right here under Speed, it should be higher than Base Speed. In, uh, in most cases, a lot of times the CPU will be running at base speed and will only go into turbo mode when it's under heavy load. But that's going to cause a lot of problems and stuttering if your CPU is constantly switching speeds. It's a lot better if it's running at a consistent speed. So in my case, I overclocked my CPU, but before that it was running consistently at 4.7 GHz. So depending on your CPU, it's going to be a different way to make sure that it's in turbo mode. But most likely you will have to go into the BIOS setting. To get into a BIOS setting is when you boot up your computer, you hit delete or F7 or F11. It depends on your computer. So a quick Google search with your CPU model and your or your computer model is going to help you figure out how to make sure that your CPU is always running at the highest speed possible. All right, guys. Now I'm going to show you how to find the right Fortnite settings for your setup. The easiest way to go about it is just to test out different setups. There's a few different ones. The first one is if you have a strong GPU, a relatively strong GPU, then you want to run your textures on high. All right, right here. Look, textures are low. I'm getting 500 FPS. But if I go textures on Epic, 620. It doesn't really make a difference. Do you notice? Because what's happening is my graphics card doesn't have a problem rendering all those textures. But if I put them on low, right, now my graphics card has to 
render the textures and then optimize them and then render them again in a way. Does that make sense? So if you have no problem rendering your textures on high, make sure you leave it on high. Okay? That's really important because otherwise you're adding a necessary clog into the render queue. Think of it as a freeway. A big freeway. And the textures are like trucks. Big trucks and they start going really fast on the freeway. If you start trying to optimize it, like even setting it, the textures to low, so now the, tr the trucks kind of have to go to this pit stop and then get their weight checked, lower their weight, and then go back on the freeway. It just adds unnecessary problems if the trucks can just go, if that makes sense. So that's why it's, uh, I highly recommend you guys, if you have like a GTX 10 series or above, set your textures on Epic and everything else on low. That's going to actually help you with the render queue. And when it comes to testing out different settings, you'll notice that if certain settings are not going to impact your FPS as much. So shadows, for example, is going to be the highest uh, resource hog. So shadows is definitely, like, as soon as I turn it on, if, I'm not, if I turn on shadows on high, then my FPS just drops completely, like by 100 or 200. So that's why I always leave shadows off. But if I'm streaming, I'll leave it on medium. Right now I'm getting 600 FPS, but keep in mind I'm streaming and recording with OBS right now. Also, it is on performance mode. And let me show you guys. With performance mode, I'm getting 540. If I turn it on, 520, 510, it starts dropping slightly. And now we got stutters. We got all sorts of problems. So put it on performance mode. And things will be a lot better. Now, for your setup specifically, there's different options. Okay, You can either go with DirectX 12. DirectX 12 is better for newer setups. If your setup is like within the last five years, DirectX 12 is going to be a better option. If you have a really old laptop, like with no graphics card, just Intel chipset drivers, then performance mode. Performance alpha is going to be your best bet. If you do have a graphics card, okay, and it's uh, just really old, but you do have a graphics card, then don't put it performance mode alpha. Put it on DirectX 11. And you want to test out different things. Now, the other thing I want to mention is if you have it on DirectX 12, don't do this. Every settings video is going to tell you to go to your Fortnite folder, binaries, Win64, go right here, right click, properties, compatibility, and disable full screen optimizations. This only works if you're running the game in DirectX 11 mode. Okay, if you're not running in DirectX 11, don't mess with this. Leave it alone. So in my case, I'm running DirectX 12. So I'd leave it alone. If I had a weak GPU or weak CPU or some other setup, then I would run DirectX 11. All right, so it's important to know the difference between DirectX 12 and DirectX 11. The, um, the other thing you want to do is if you have an RTX card, with DLSS, there's a common misconception. Look, I'm running in that performance mode, right? With 500 FPS. Now, watch what happens if I set it on quality. Nothing. So, you're like, oh, this is garbage, right? Nothing's happening. Well, DLSS, if you read, is deep learning super sampling. So, certain settings like DLSS, you're going to have to play the game for like half an hour to an hour to really see the difference. And the other misconception is if you go to the NVIDIA website, it tells you very clearly if you're running at 1080p, set DLSS to quality, not performance. If you're running on 4K or 8K, then set it to performance. So I highly recommend you guys if you have RTX cards, either run it on quality if you're on 1080p or set it to off. And this goes without mentioning, but ray tracing is a complete scam, so make sure it's off. Even with the ray tracing on, it just... Completely annihilates your FPS and honestly, it doesn't even look any better. Alright guys, this is one of the biggest things that's going to help you to increase FPS with the least amount of problem. So it's called XMP profiles for your RAM. So if you're like most people and you buy your RAM from let's say Newegg, and you look at the RAM and you're seeing, oh, wow, this DDR4 running at 4,000 megahertz. But when you actually plug in the sticks into your computer and you go to the task manager, 
you go to performance memory, you'll notice it's not going to be running at 4,000. It's going to be running at 3,200 or uh, some lower frequency. The reason why they say it runs higher than it really does is because of something called XMP profiles. XMP profiles are essentially overclocking profiles that come straight from the manufacturer. A lot of times you'll have two or even three XMP profiles. And what you got to do is go to your BIOS and then turn on the profiles and test them. A lot of times some of the profiles will make your com computer blue screen or even crash. But don't worry, nothing is broken. Everything is fine. You just have to cycle through the different XMP profiles to find the one that works for you. So that's why it's really important to open up your computer or if you already know your RAM model, go to your task manager and see what speed your memory is running at. If it's not running at the speed that it said it's running at, then that definitely means that you have an XMP profile that you haven't enabled. That's going to in insanely increase your FPS and a lot of people don't know about it. It's really simple to do. Go to your BIOS setting and turn it on. Again, it's different for your mo depending on your motherboard and your RAM. So you have to figure out the exact model of your RAM to see if it has support for an XMP profile. All right, guys. Now let's talk about NVIDIA settings. NVIDIA and AMD, they're going to have different settings, but if you have AMD, the same things apply. You might have different settings, but the idea is the same. So the way I optimized my NVIDIA settings is, you'll notice texture filtering, quality, high quality. That's extremely important here. Because what I'm doing is, um, like I said earlier with the freeway, I'm letting the textures to be high, qu high quality so there's no filtering. I want to reduce any sort of filtering, optimization, or buffering to the textures because that means that the textures have loaded and now they have to go through this optimization stage before they render so it's, uh, while it might be helping you a little bit for most of you guys it's not helping at all so if you look take a look at my nvidia settings here pretty much image sharpening is off um, if you go to the nvidia website they'll tell you to turn it on i suggest to turn it off because again after the game renders now it has to optimize it again. And now you get stutters because uh, one optimization doesn't work with another. So removing them all is going to be your best bet. And now the other thing a lot of people don't understand is certain settings like anti-aliasing mode. Yes, you could turn it off, but it's better to leave it application controlled. Why? Because if you're overriding it with NVIDIA. So now what happens is Fortnite is creating a setting for anti-aliasing. And then NVIDIA is overriding it again. So now you have maybe get the stutter where the game doesn't know what to do because the game's telling it's one thing the, and then NVIDIA is telling it something else. So if you have an option for to set it to application controlled, meaning if you have an option in the game, in, in our case, we have an anti-aliasing option mo in Fortnite. We could turn it off, low, medium, high. So that's where we let the application control it. So that's another thing. And uh, last but not least, Low latency mode. If you're running um, DX11, DX11 doesn't have such a thing as low latency mode. Let me show you guys. Low latency mode DX11. There's no such thing. If you use DirectX 12, turn low latency mode to off. So that's actually my mistake. I'm not sure why it's on right now. But low latency should be off because Dir DirectX 12 doesn't have such a thing as low latency mode. It has ref uh, reflex low latency, which is different than low latency mode. I know it's confusing, but I'll link this Reddit thread in the comment section. So if you have DirectX 12, low latency, low latency mode should be off. And if you're running DirectX 11, then go ahead and turn it on. That's going to be a also solve a lot of your issues when it comes to um, stutters. And AMD has something similar. Uh, I think it's called free sync or something else but make sure that depending on if you're running DirectX 12 or DirectX 11 the settings match because if you have a mismatch in settings you set everything to ultra and optimize everything and you expect it to be better it's not gonna work like that all right so that's uh that's kind of like my idea and it's gonna be the same for AMD the settings gonna be different but the idea is the same All right, guys, let me go over my Fortnite settings. Again, these are easily changed. And the most important thing is you want to figure out if you're running DirectX 12 or DirectX 11. 
And here you notice there's something called NVIDIA Reflex Low Latency. You can turn it on. So the, the I'll make another video going specifically over Reflex Low Latency, the difference between on and on plus boost. In my case, I just have it off completely. But as you can see here, if you read, NVIDIA Reflex Low Latency reduces system, system latency in GPU bound scenarios. I'm not GPU bound, so I turn it off. Not every optimization is a good optimization, okay? And one thing I also forgot to mention, if you don't have a strong CPU, you don't have to leave multi-threaded rendering on. You can actually turn it off and you'll have no problems. If, if, not, if anything, it'll be better. Okay, so let me just go over my Fortnite settings. I'll just scroll through. By the way, I'm on West. I don't play on East. The West is the best, okay? So everybody knows. And here's the settings. Also, record replays. If you turn it off, it's going to help you a lot. Recording replays essentially means the game is recording it in the background. Not good. HUD. Surprise. If you, I don't know if it surprises you or not, but if you turn off your HUD, you'll get higher FPS. So you might want to mess with this a little bit. My case, my case, I just have regular. Um, my HUD is just normal. Um, this is my settings here for the mouse controller. I don't play a controller. Um, this and here's my keybinds for those that are interested. Select building edit and reset building edit. Mouse wheel up. Or building edit and reset should be binded to the same button. That's the correct way to set up scroll wheel reset. A lot of people don't know that. Um, yeah, everything else is pretty default. And yeah, so these are my Fortnite settings. If you made it this far into the video, here's the secret tip. And it's really secret, and I bet you still you didn't know about it. Razer Cortex is the only program I would suggest you guys use for optimization. So the way it works, um, if you go to don't don't go here, don't go macro, don't do macros. That's bad. But Razer Cortex is really really good for optimizing your RAM, freeing up your RAM. So I think the right one is right here. What you do is you go to Boost. And then uncheck everything except for clean RAM. So what it's going to do is it's actually going to clean up your RAM and free up some more RAM for Fortnite. Can't go wrong with that. It's a really easy way to do it. I always have it on. Uh, you can also try the other optimizations. But for me, I like to just clear the RAM. And let me show you guys 54 megabytes of RAM release. But a lot of times it will be like really high, like a few hundred megabytes. So this will really help you with your FPS boost. And I highly suggest uh, Razer Cortex. It's one of my favorite programs to use for boosting FPS. And it actually does work. It's not like a gimmick like all these other weird programs. This is straight from Razer. Razer is a reputable company. You're not downloading shady software from God knows where. So if you're looking for a little extra edge to your FPS, Razer Cortex 100% free. Don't worry about Booster Prime. Thank you guys for watching this video. I hope these tips help you to optimize your FPS, reduce stutters, and reduce your input lag. Only like this video if this video actually helped you. This way it lets me know whether my videos are helpful or not. Use code NEED for BEANS. Sub to my YouTube. Peace.